All right. I'm back. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Thank you, guys. Thanks for sticking here. I appreciate it. I don't, I don't know what happened there. Uh, everything was fine on my end. Didn't even notice any errors or anything, and it just ended. Anybody else use, like, the Streamlabs stuff and have this issue? This is one thing I need to look up more. Mage, I know you're, you're kind of an expert in th this area. Like, do you ever have these types of issues? I, we get them every once in a while, it seems. Um, so we're back. I didn't, I didn't move forward with the story at all. So um, I was just talking about how interesting it is, how y you're also telling the deer information. So it's not just this wise and like teacher of a deer teaching you stuff. It seems like you're sharing something that's revealing about your character. So also a leopard. Called Neptune. After many blissful months of peace, despite the steeliness of her fur for her forest fortress, uh, her followers found her and began throwing themselves once more at her steel-clad feet. Praise the steel queen, they would chant. One night, when the stars were glistening brightly across Neptune's back, the steel queen decided to end the parade. She commanded the brightest stars in the sky to turn into steel, forming a perfect image of herself in the heavens. Seeing how much larger this new steel queen was, her enthusiastic cult mostly left her alone. The relentless followers turned their chants to the sky. Let's do that. The end. Hmm. I shall never look at those stars the same way. Tell me, what others do you know? Alright, the mage says, I have Streamlabs, Streamlabs OBS uh, in my house. I would get randomly disconnected when the transfer rate at the bottom hit zero kilobytes per second. Yeah, I... I don't know. I, I guess I should have looked in more detail at some of the stuff. I don't know what happened there. Um... Yeah, occasionally we get a few things, but yeah, thank you all for sticking through there. Um, curious mage about like the the kind of the story and the um, and the plans for your RPG. Are you guys like I got I got to watch a, a bit briefly at, on one night, but what's kind of I don't know if you want to type it. It's no problem if you don't want to, but I'm curious about kind of like what you're going for and. Uh, how you're developing it, like a basic idea behind it. If you want to share, if not, we can definitely connect another time on that. Uh, but very fascinated to hear about that. Well, you've got Ralphie the Argonaut. There's the worm. I wonder what happens if I say I can't think of any. Okay. Perhaps the stars are enough. Perhaps. Wasn't that reverse the dialogue? Didn't we have something like that earlier? Is it cold out? See, that's those punctuated moments with the bird and the music. This is a great way of saying, you know, showing again, like simplicity can go a long way in creating atmosphere and, uh, and being meaningful. Whoa, did you see that? I saw a shadow and a wing. It was massive. What do you think it was? A bird of the dark. I would say an owl. I was going to say pterodactyl, but yours makes more sense. An owl. An owl. You do not understand how I feel about owls? They're feathered twilight angels, okay? They're just so beautiful and 
Enigmatic. I haven't heard that word used in a little while. Enigmatic. You want to know a fun fact about owls? Yes. Their eyes aren't normal eyes. They can rotate their necks. They have three eyelids. I didn't know that. Three eyelids? I knew the others, though. Three eyelids? Really? Like for each eye? Times two. Six eyelids. One's for blinking. One's for sleeping. Interesting. And the other's for keeping clean. I did not know that. Interesting. Yes, dear, I agree. It's so odd. Why not just have a multi-purpose lid like the rest of us? Evolution works in mysterious ways. It certainly does. As do eyes. And owls. Look at the sky. It's amazing. You know a great deal about owls. Uh, yeah, I used to be owl girl. Owl girl. At school, I was a total owl weirdo. I used to have this owl backpacks. So everyone called me owl girl. There are worse titles. <laughs> I know it, it was a cute backpack too. I was pretty into owls in fairness. People asked me about it and I was just like, owls are cool, okay? I wasn't really doing myself any favors, I guess. Owls are fascinating and complex. Oh, hey, mage. Okay, let's hear what you got. Oh, let me read this first. Uh, I have lost many a night to intrigue following the moonlit escapades of an owl. All right, what you got? You say, I want to create an old school JRPG style game with modern concepts and philosophy. Hey, man. Mage, do you want to be a guest on Indie Game Club sometime? Seriously. Um, I would love to... This is the stuff we like to talk about, my friend. Uh, there will be a ton of modern humor and dialogue that mixes all eras of the genre. It's my first big project, and I'm doing it mostly just to prove I can. I love that, man. That is awesome. Good on you. Uh, it's also fun bringing the community into the process and really helps you realize you need a team to create a great game. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Um, we are playing an RPG next week that's going to be really interesting. It's called an airport game, also included with this giant bundle. It is an RPG set in a airport where you're trying to catch a flight. I believe the whole game plays in about 30 minutes or so, um, but it also like embraces JRPG kind of tropes um, to an extent. I haven't played it yet, but just watching the trailer and uh, looking into it a bit, um, I think it's worth checking out. Of course, you're probably familiar with all those like. Uh, what was that Charles Barkley, Shut Up and Jam, uh, JRPG, and things of that nature. Um, definitely interested to hear more about that, with your, especially the whole idea with the, the modern co concepts and philosophy. I would love to hear kind of what you're going for. Is there like, if there's like a central theme or message you're trying to kind of elucidate or explore, like, um, yeah, that sounds, that sounds super cool. Are you, are you building it like an RPG maker? Or I'm curious what, um, if you have like a, a platform you're building it in. Um, all right, let's, let's keep reading here. Yes, high five. All right, what you got from your mage? You're saying, um, one of the biggest themes is climate change. Yeah, all an RPG maker. Hey, yeah. I don't know if you know this actually, Mage, but I worked for um, a, a decade in community organizing and activism and worked for a number of sustainability organizations. So used to work for Sustain Charlotte, used to work for Greenpeace. I've done climate work has, was my life for, for years. And, um, you know, working on, for example, uh, the Strategic Energy Action Plan for Charlotte. Um, I worked heavily on that and at the state level on solar energy policy and a wide variety of things. So if you need any, if you need any connections to the environmental world, uh, I'm more than happy to make those for you. And I'm also, um, happy just to talk about that sort of thing. Very obviously a very important topic. There's, there's several games actually that have tried to tackle it in different ways. Um, so it sounds different than this. I don't, I don't, I'm not, not to say, yeah, 
I don't I, I can't think of a JRPG that tackles it. So I think you definitely have an original idea on your hands. But I love I love hearing that. Um uh, that's awesome. I'm gonna need to talk to you about some concepts. Sure thing, man. I'm here for you. Climate change is actually huge in all of the Final Fantasies. That is true. That is true. I think a lot of it it's not just it's kind of like these deeper uh deeper questions of like exploitation of the earth right like kind of final fantasy 10 like stands out in that way to me right like with, like with sin and kind of like abuse of technology and um that sort of thing right and so like an exploitation of the people people and the planet in a way that harms us all um that that's a really good point that's a really good point um it's funny, man. You, you saying that makes me remember like a storyline I had about in high school. I was doing like a I had an RPG maker game where there was it was almost like this kind of cult that was like melting this giant glacier that was over a village, and like over time they knew that it, it was going to get flooded, and it was like this. I was playing. I think Golden Sun was something at the time, so I had this whole like big thing about that and kind of like this cult the sun cult melting it over so it's, it's you're making me kind of go back into my memory bank and think about some of the stuff um that i thought about in the past there yeah um, let me know in terms of um like how overt is the climate change like aspect to it is it is it kind of like how are you handling it uh, i guess in terms of like your your analogy to the final fantasy series and and whatnot um love to hear more about that part specifically um well never mind mental high five high hoof man i wish you were around when i was in school kids would be like hey owl girl and you could just Hoof them in the face, if you like. Excellent, I can see it now. Hey, hey, hoof. There's that owl again. Hey, that was it again. I got a pretty decent look at it this time. You see that? Let's go with this choice. It is massive. I think it's a great horned owl. How do you know? I saw its horns. They're feathery ear tufts. Ah, do you think it's hunting us? It is most likely attempting to make sense of this picture. I would imagine it to be an odd one from above. It's an odd one from down here. Yeah, let's go with that. Man, it could definitely just slap me off this cliff with one wing. Please don't, Blessed Owl. I had a backpack for you. An ironic fate for Owl Girl. Ha, check you out with the jokes. Jokes about my death? Smooth. People imagine owls to be these stern, intense loner birds. In reality, owls are probably pretty chill. It's not their fault they've got six eyelids. How many people knew that, by the way? I had no idea about that. An owl's business is that of mystery. Oh, is it landing on us? <gasps> is that going to balance the car? Oh, you'd think it would balance it the other way. Crap, is it on the car? I can hear its feet. It has landed on you, Mr. Bird uh, Bird Nest. Yeah, you never knew. I never knew either. Um, I guess with your name, Mr. Bird Nest, people might I might expect you to. I'm curious wh why you chose that name there. I should do an entire episode just asking people about their avatar or names or their you know their usernames I'm, I'm very curious about that i think it says a lot about each and every one of us the names that we chose 
Um, or it tells you something about somebody, right? Or it just tells you that, like, remember in the days when PlayStation Network wouldn't allow you to um, to change your name? So, like, people had all these, like, immature names that they created, like, in high school or, or whatnot that, that they had going into adulthood. Um, fun times. Uh, Mage saying, mine's pretty cut and dry. Yeah, well, Mage, I'm curious about yours, though. Is that, like, was it... You were Mage before Mage Artisanry, though, right? Like, um... It was, is, I'm curious about the, kind of, the early... The roots of that. Uh, Mr. Bird's Nest saying, my name is Bird Nest because a classmate called my hair a Bird Nest haircut from how long and curly it is. See, isn't that wild? Like, yeah, all these names that we have are... Um... See, there's a story behind it. I love that. That's really cool. And how long ago was that? It's probably something you just had and it stuck for whatever reason, right? And it just became a thing. That's cool. The name that I typically use for gaming is Capitan, which is a Polish version of, like, Captain. But Captain came from Captain Two Hands from a, a, a very kind of... I would say rather obscure game, which I wonder if any of you will recall. It was an early interplay game from probably 96. It was called Loaded, and then there was Reloaded. Uh, but there was Captain Two Hands, which I think... So my early name that I came up with my brother was Captain Kickass, because I thought that was so cool. So that was my early name for a ton of different stuff. Uh, then just became Captain and Capitan. Mr. Birdness, it was around like June and he tried to insult me, but it didn't work. Oh, so like of this year. So it's not, this is like freshly made. I love it. I love it. That's how, oops, kicked something over. I love it. Uh, Mage saying, I've always been Mage Masher for years because it was the first weapon you got. Oh, in Final Fantasy IX. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I just shortened it down to the Mage since it encompasses more of the genre I love. I feel you on that. All right, Mage, I got a question for you. So I was talking to um, a, a friend of mine. We were talking some game dev stuff, that, some projects that we're working on together. And I brought up a game, a JRPG made here in the U.S. It came out in the late 90s. I want to say the very end of the 90s. Might have, It might be like, actually, you know what? It might have been like 2000, 2001. Um, but I'm curious if you played this. I'll be really impressed if any of you are familiar with this game. I absolutely love this game. Anachronox. Look it up. If you haven't played it, I guarantee you'll love it. Or at least I highly think you'll love it. I absolutely love this game. It was made by uh, Mr. Tom Hall, who um, was part of... Um, uh, part of id software so it was helped with doom and um the commander keen series and um and then went on over to ion storm and he had this plan for this like jrpg epic story um that just never was fully completed of course unfortunately a lot of i if you're familiar with ion storm and uh daikatana um and, and how that studio, how things went down at that studio, a lot, blowing a lot of money and kind of with ambitious ideas that then they took their sweet time on things, which, you know, I mean, they, they produced some really cool stuff. I mean, Deus Ex came from my favorite game, probably my favorite game of all time came um, from Ion Storm. So shout out to them. They, I think they had two different. I think it was like an Austin studio and a Dallas studio, if I'm not mistaken. So there was a difference there. Um, uh, Mage said, yeah, JRPG made in the Quake 2 engine. Exactly. Yep. Uh, it is a fantastic game. Excellent writing, excellent story. It embraces all of like the best elements of... Honestly, it's one of my favorite JRPGs of all time, I actually will say. Honestly. Um, I will say in, in my adult years and you know with children and whatnot, I have not had the chance to like delve into the longer stuff as much. So it's been a while. Um... But, you know, I would say, like, yeah, I, I really loved it. I, I really, really loved it. And the humor and the writing was really on point. I bet you it holds up pretty well recently. I, I think, actually, the, the game dev I was talking to, I think, had only recently played it. I played it, like, when it first came out, so I can't really tell you. They also, one of the, I think, people involved in the game took all the cinematics and, like, made a, a movie that he put out on Machinima, if you remember that. 
Um, and so he made like kind of like a four hour or yeah, I want to say it was like a four hour long movie. Maybe it was less. Uh, and you can watch the whole because he was kind of, you know, they were all like not enough people got a chance to play this game. It was never ported um, over. It was one of those games that hasn't has kind of been doesn't have it's slept on it doesn't have the attention it truly deserves um uh yeah you saying you love deus ex yeah so i'll check that out yeah for sure check it out i wouldn't say it's like deus ex even though it's like the same uh it was the other ion storm studios i think the austin studio was making um with warren specter they were making um they were making deus ex while i want to say the dallas studio this is this is going back in like 20 years in my in my brain here for this knowledge um john romero's side of things was um with tom hall in dallas i think but yeah look it up at least just look up some videos of it super cool uh definitely a different approach jrpg approach versus like a first person kind of western design approach it's interesting ion storm had two different producing two different totally different types of rpgs um all right what do we got here it says oh my god what's it doing studying surveying the area why did it have to land on me this might be a blessing right here right if it shifts the weight maybe the deer with its antlers can help us out if this was any other situation this is literally my fantasy isn't that interesting in life that one of owl girls fantasy to see a deer up this close and yet this is like kind of had a, a bad situation in life um it surveys. It's going to survey my death if it makes any drastic movements. Yeah, I love this kind of eagerly red clouds and weights. Oh, I missed that last line. It will leave. Uh, you're saying John Romero is one of the coolest people ever? Yeah, he's an interesting guy. You know, if I would highly suggest reading a book called Masters of Doom. Um, it's, it's one of the top game it's one of the absolute best books to cover the game industry and in this case it specifically talks about um id software and it's like in its heyday um or it's in its most remembered time when john carmack um john romero tom hall american mcgee so many big names were um were there making doom and quake so it kind of follows primarily doom and quake um kind of yeah i don't think it really goes too much in like quake 2 territory or wolfenstein as much it does actually it does because it talks about commander keen and um and what was that like the par parallax scrolling i forgot no it was a different type of scrolling there's a lot of interesting things that they did they actually ported mario brothers 3 and reached out to nintendo which is i think an interesting story uh, they were able to pull that off in, in a big way but um john romero of course is also famous for that that advertising campaign saying uh, john romero is about to make you his bitch suck it down if anybody remembers that that was a huge thing talk about like early early memes type stuff um yeah it's pretty wild so uh, mario 3 at the time or, or sorry not mario 3 Mar regular mario original mario my fault i don't know why i said mario 3 i, I think i've been thinking too much of the all-star stuff original mario the idea of it scrolling with a screen was actually rather difficult to do and even though pcs um at the time might have had some better hardware than the nes um that was actually very difficult to do and so the folks at id were able to do that smooth scrolling and um and that's why commander keen at the time was interesting and so they originally were trying to they they contacted nintendo to do a, an official port uh and it sounded like from the book that nintendo was definitely impressed with it but wasn't interested um, as we probably all know at this time, right? Nintendo's not really interested to take its properties onto different platforms, I guess, outside of some recent attempts at mobile. Um, it will leave. Let's just wait here for this owl. But yeah, definitely check out Masters of Doom. I would also throw in Console Wars, which is about... That's a, a fantastic book. Uh, it's probably... Those two are my probably my two favorite books about the game industry. Maybe Game Over as well. There's There's, there's quite a few good ones. No, Owl, I want you to stay. Keep the balance of the car. But Console Wars is about to be a documentary on CBS All Access. The trailer for that recently came out. Um, oh, wow. Bloody hell. 
Let's see. Sorry. One. one. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to speed this up a, a little bit because I'm I do gotta get to a couple other things here. But um, always love talking about this type of thing as well. All right, let's see. Uh, goodbye, sweet owl. Please don't come back. I can't breathe. Damn. I I think the owl is a good thing. I mean, I guess I could throw the balance off, but it seemed like it was pushing towards the back. That was kind of amazing and kind of terrifying. I think that's part of it. Embracing all this, right? In my experience, the greatest emotions are felt in moments of fear and awe. I probably agree with you there. Although I could do without anything else sitting on the car tonight. Tonight, anything could happen. Seems like it, buddy. I don't know anymore, dear. Do you? Do I what? Do you know? Do I know what? I don't know. Then neither do I. I'm trying to stay positive or I don't feel... I don't know what to feel anymore. Let's go with that. A piano could drop on me right now and I wouldn't feel it. I just don't care anymore. I'm sick of clinging on pointlessly. Why should I still care? I also love the wind and the fireflies here as well. What is it? Wait. Yeah, definitely good writing for sure, Mage. You're right. You have got to be kidding me. Oh god, I totally forgot about this place. I can't believe I forgot. It used to rain here every single time when we were kids. It's like notorious. Alright, everything I said before about things being bad... They were fine. Now they're bad. The beauty was just getting started. What? What is more beautiful than this? Literally anything else. But is anything more mesmerizing than the transformation brought by the rain? Puppies. Not being here. Life would be nothing without beauty. Well, we're not going to be alive to see it. You worry about death while life ignites around you. Hmm. This is the fire of beauty that rages from the earth. Serenity lay in wait to be ripped apart for the wildest form. Torrents of exhilaration pour from the sky. Quake shake the ocean to cry out. Blistering crescendo from every form of life. All are thrust from rest to revel. 
in violent beauty. The rebel in violent beauty. Uh, nothing sleeps while nature takes its fiercest dance. Yeah, I hear you, Darts of All, but I, I also enjoy being out in nature in the rain. For sure. I'm curious how this is going to end. I'm curious how I want it to end, to be honest. Do I want it just to almost like stay in the situation for us to not have a, a resolution? I don't feel like this story has set itself up in a way where we necessarily want any sort of clean resolution. I think it needs to stay in this kind of world that it's established. Um, I feel like I should be terrified. But I'm not. You know what I mean? Like, or kind of in its own kind of state where you know, what we wanted at the beginning of the game is just to be able to back the car out or all, all those things are kind of pushed aside now and there's more to it at stake here. Um, yeah, state of limbo. Maybe just maintain that after this. I'm not sure. I don't know what I feel. The player feels like the character does, yeah. In that, in that way, you're saying, like, if, if you maintain it, um, yeah. That's always one of the challenging things about these types of games, is because there's kind of you, the character, and the or you, the player, and the character in the game, there's somewhat of a separation, because in this case, there's obviously, like, some predefined story and other elements that, even though you can kind of choose things amongst the, a decision tree, there are some things they want you to know about this specific character in mind. But I, I, I hear your point, Mage. Have you seen anything like that? While I have seen storms, there are never two quite the same. Um, I feel like I can still feel it shaking the ground. I've never been anywhere near a storm like that. Hmm. We're still here. Yeah, I think very few games... I'm having trouble remembering other games that have done this level of... Um, so much packed with so little actually changing. I mean, like a one-scene game. This is very interesting. I, I know that there's a couple in the back of my mind. I can't really think of them at the moment. Christ, now the sun's coming up. So we're kind of back to the initial scene that, that set the stage for this all. Thus lifts the veil of night. This night? I can't believe we've been here the entire night. Yeah, I mean, maybe now we can try the car. For those who were watching earlier, that was one of the things we were waiting for. We couldn't get the... We tried to start the car, and it, and it, and it broke. Um, or it just, you know, wouldn't start. How can that many things happen? You and I are invincible. I don't know if we want to go that far. Uh, similar feeling to 12 Angry Men. So much packed into a little space. Excellent example. Excellent example. Yeah. That one, that's a great example, because that truly is, in this case, similar to where the characters make the story, the dialogue between them makes the story. Yeah. Excellent example, yeah. I'm trying to think of anything on the game side, but I think that's the perfect example on the film side for sure. 
In fact, I don't know if I can think of a better example than that even on the film side. I mean, there have been some other shows and things. Like, I remember there's that show, like, set, like, in a diner that was all set in, like, one table. Uh, but 12 um, Angry Men is probably the one of the best examples for sure. Um, honestly, I don't even feel like the same person. Yeah, this is a life-changing experience, right? Not only being terrified for your life, but also uh, the talking to a deer, right? And going deep in a whole night of conversation and constant changing events. I came out here so worried about what I'm supposed to do. But it all seems so inconsequential now. It's all so pointless. Which is actually a relief. The waves will keep on crashing after I'm gone. The trees will still be clinging on. The grass will still be blowing. True. Even if I never came back. If I never came here in the first place. That consistency is so grounding. Like, it doesn't matter what I do in the future. It really doesn't make a difference. Yes, the ocean is beautiful. Maybe I'll be buried in it tomorrow. But it's pretty okay now. It's nice to just have that right now. I know this cliff will still be here, even if I left. Just being here away from everything else. Even remembering that it's here. It's like soaking up a sponge with the horizon and the clouds and everything. And then just taking it away. leaving knowing that it all carries on hey where are you going I like the touch with the pools of water, by the way. You can see the reflection and everything from the storm. Nice little small touches. I think we embrace it. Goodbye, stag. It's just us, Mala. Mala is the name we gave our car. Want to give it another shot? Maybe we do a cut to black so we don't know whether the engine starts. A little Inception Sopranos season finale sort of situation here. I think that might be it, actually. Yeah, it fades away, exactly. So we have no idea. Were the tracks, is it? Right, the tracks weren't there before, were they? I don't know if this is leading us to believe that, you know, either fell off 
or I'll have to rewind the video later to check. Do you all remember the tracks? Yeah, I think that's the idea, right? It's open to interpretation. But I think more important than it's open to interpretation, I don't know if that matters. I think that's what's interesting. The whole kind of thing about this game is that you're intrigued about this idea of what are you going to do in a situation where you are on a cliff, hanging in limbo between life and death. And by the end of the whole experience... Like, that's not even, like, the biggest thing anymore, right? That's not even necessarily, there, there's a, there's a larger takeaway. Um, Mage saying tracks were there beforehand, by the way. Okay, cool. I, I'm glad, actually, I, that, that, I'd much prefer it to be that way. So it's not a simple answer that we, um, I don't know how I've been staring at the screen for, what, two hours or a little less than two hours and couldn't quite remember the um the tracks made with yarn and unity yarn and yarns like integration with unity there like there seems to be a lot of good tools that might be something to look into as well mage in terms of keeping track of all the story elements of course rpg maker has something like that as well um i really enjoyed that game i really enjoyed it i hope you all did too um Darth Sabalba, I know, hopefully you're still there. I know you were uh, with me at the beginning of this game. Um, curious what you thought. Um, Mage Sam I'm using good old-fashioned notepad for the story. I love it. Well, like, things like Yarn, and there's a couple other kind of, like, engines that keep track of story, and you can actually integrate them. So they're, like, they're like story engines that you can then integrate with a different platform, and that allows you to keep track of all of the the dialogue and like key decisions that are made um that might be something to consider you know because your story I, I don't know you know it depends on how much of a branching narrative you want to have uh Darth Sebulba saying that's a great story yeah I really liked it um I really liked it a lot uh Darth Sebulba would be curious to hear like your your overall yeah just your thoughts in general um Yeah, I, I, I really like this. Um, yeah, Mage saying this game was awesome. I agree. Yeah, this was really, really cool. Um, again, really driving home that point, I think, just from, a, just from an experience standpoint, that you can do so much with so little. Um, uh, not to say that this is little effort in any way in that regard, but you know, you know what I mean in terms of minimalism focusing on not even going overboard with like all the kind of the effects that are happening like the storm happens rain happens wind but those are they're punctuated moments that really grab your attention um kind of leveraged in between a lot of the the dialogue so really beautiful game um Darth Sebulba saying i'll have to research the animals and their spiritual meaning yeah please let me know about that i'd be i'd be curious to to dig in deeper on that. This has me now wanting to go down that whole rabbit hole of just seeing, you know, trying to read other people's interpretations of this, reviews, that that sort of thing. Um, that's kind of one of the impetus, you know, the impetus for starting Indie Game Club and just the reason for trying to delve deeper in this stuff is I've been so just disappointed that there's all these amazing indie games from so many creative individuals and yet there's not much to like there's not much out there from the interpretive or uh critical side to kind of like analyze them and and unpack it a bit more um right we have that so much for films and tv right now like we're in peak peak television and and whatnot and this kind of golden age but we're not really doing that for games and so it always surprises me when um you know i think this game was well, resolution, that was the highest. I thought we were playing at 1440. Anyway. That's weird, because when we were playing it, it was different earlier. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm just, I'm glad that, um, that, that we're able to kind of contribute in that way. Um... 
Yeah, that, folks, is our final game of the night. Stick around for one second. We're going to continue this pay-it-forward love of um, folks raiding and, and hosting our channel and all that. Shout out to Mystic Tightness and, and Mage, and shout out to everybody who followed and subscribed. Thank you, Mage. Um, and for those stuck around and those who hopped in even when they could, really appreciate it. We have our friend Scarlet Aeon right now who is playing Tell Me Why, which I think we're going to go ahead and raid her channel because we're having a conversation actually tomorrow. In fact, I'll go through that stuff real quick. Um, so stick around if you can. We can we can raid her and then before we call it a night. But um, yeah, I'll talk about Tell Me Why in just a moment here. Of course, all this stuff was part of Indie Game Club. We host this show twice a week, at least twice a week. We have uh, fellow streamers that um, we share their work as well throughout the week. One of our regulars, Layla, Angelic Layla, who's streaming right now, it looks like. Uh, she's going to start streaming stuff on Friday, so make sure to check out her, and we will be posting those events up as well. But on Mondays, we stream the games like we did today. On Thursdays, that's when we have the big group discussion. So definitely looking forward to that. Hopefully you can join us for that. It's always a great time. Our Tuesday conversations have been uh, really fantastic. We started that off with Black Voices in Gaming. Um, these conversations you can find, they're still archived on our Facebook and YouTube page, followed by Women in Gaming with the wonderful folks at the Athena Alliance. Uh, who uh, some of whose members I was mentioning before. Uh, after that, we had custom game controllers with none other than Mage right here. Appreciate you um, being on that uh, panel discussion. It was fantastic. Appreciate our sponsor, Lowe's. Um, also appreciate Red Bull, who threw in an arcade stick that was... Um, that one lucky winner got and uh, I'm so glad to see him him post about it and sh share how much he's been enjoying it so that's been fantastic so thank you to Mage and everyone else who shared their kind of personal stories about how they got involved in modding and creating custom controllers and just exploring the art and technology of of that area and that field um, for games to the rescue we had a conversation where we explored how uh, games are being used to fight against coronavirus and so I think this is definitely worth checking out if you are interested outside of, of course, um, practicing proper social distancing and wearing your masks, there's also opportunities like playing games like Eterna and Fold It to be able to help find solutions to Corona, which is fantastic and really interesting. So please do check that out. Again, all of these sponsored by our good friends at Lowe's. We appreciate their support. All of these can be found on our Facebook and YouTube page. Uh, Black Voices in Esports was a conversation we had two weeks ago with um, our friends here, something that we had been talking about doing for a while, and we've had these conversations over, and we're like, hey, we finally need to get this recorded and, and on video, so we did that and had a great time. Um, last week, we played the first chapter of Tell Me Why, which is the game I was mentioning earlier that we're going to send folks over from here. We're going to raid Scarlet Aeon's um, um, stream because she is playing that right now. Um, we played chapter one, and we are excited to be discussing this tomorrow for LGBT vo LGBT plus voices in gaming uh, part one. This is a two-part conversation. So tomorrow at 7 p.m., we're going to have a, a conversation exploring LGBT representation in the game industry, uh, both on how characters are portrayed as well as the creative side, people who are creating the games, creating gaming events, esports, that sort of thing. So we'll be exploring that Um as well as an in-depth discussion of Tell Me Why Chapter One. So if you have, if you want to jump in on that conversation with us, if you want to, you know, just like Indie Game Club, if you love these types of in-depth conversations, please join us for Tell Me Why Chapter One's conversation as part of LGBT Plus Voices in Gaming, uh, happening tomorrow at 7 p.m. Um, Tell Me Why is significant because it's the first game from a major studio and major publisher that features a uh, uh, transgender um, lead character. So. This is Tyler here um, and his uh, twin sister, Allison. So definitely, and I, and I played it last week. I absolutely loved it. This is from the folks who uh, created Life is Strange, the Don't Nod Entertainment. Um, so if you're familiar with their prior work, um, which you probably are, or if you're familiar with Telltale Games, it's it's in a, in a similar style to that. Um, so that is coming up tomorrow. And then next week, same time, same place, 
uh, we will be hosting LGBT Voices in Gaming Part 2, which will be continuing our conversation about LGBT plus representation in the game industry, as well as um, discussing uh, Tell Me Why Chapters 2 and 3. And those are the final two chapters. It's only three chapters. The game is available right now on Game Pass. Uh, the third chapter just was released four days ago. And I think each chapter is like three or so hours long. Um, if chapter one's any indication, the rest of the game is going to be fantastic. And, um, and it's just, it, it, it's a really, yeah, great game, PC and Xbox. Um, uh, it's also available on Steam. Highly recommend it. Next month, we have a lot of different gaming events planned, including Hispanic Voices in Gaming uh, with our friend here, Julio E. Nazario. Um, Julio's been on a, on, a, on a roll, on a hot streak with all the new games he's been um, creating left and right. So several of those will be published this year, and several already have. Uh, this game right here that you see in the background, Control, uh, which is spelled C-T-R-L. Uh, you can find it in stores like Target. Um, I got it there. It was only 25 bucks. It's a great family game to play. I've been playing it with my family. We've all we've all really enjoyed it. Um, make sure to check it out. So we're looking forward to talking with um, a fellow North Carolinian discussing um, his his board games design board game designs and digging in deeper. So check that out. But of course, outside of talking about games, we love playing them as well. So we hope you can join us for online game nights. These are opportunities to play with a really friendly, welcoming community. We plan. Uh, every day there's somebody playing something there. We got a, a big Discord now. Uh, it's growing constantly. It's it's bigger and bigger every day, it seems. Um, but join it if you haven't already. Uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays are the more organized events. I'm, um, I'm there on Wednesdays. A, a friend and regular on Indie Game Club, uh, Mr. Bryant Allen, is the organizer on Saturdays. So shout out to him. Is the great, as he goes by. Um he uh, helps organize the Saturday event. So it's video games, board games, whatever you're into, chances are there's going to be somebody there to play it. Uh, Wednesdays are also an opportunity for our Potions and Pixels online league featuring Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. This is a uh, league that it was designed from the ground up for all skill levels, all ages in mind. It's totally free. Wednesdays are kind of like your learning sessions, um, but you play as well. And it's an opportunity to learn about different characters, different levels, uh, different techniques. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And that's with Sensei Winter Soul. So make sure to check that out. Um, we've been doing our regular King of the Ring sessions, but Winter Soul's been switching them up a bit. Uh, last Friday was Queen of the Ring, a women-only league. This Friday will be Team of the Ring, which is an online battle arena for teams. So check that out for sure. You can always get... Um, Registering for the league is really simple. Uh, you can sign up, one, get on our Discord, two, sign up at potionsandpixels.com slash league, and then three, sign up for our tournaments uh, on, and we use the platform Bracket. Um, and so we have it divided into three tiers, gold, silver, and bronze. And the reason we do that is so you have the best experience possible. So you're playing against people of a similar skill level. We don't really want to situate... It's not always fun, right? When Sometimes we mix it up and we bring everybody together and we have opportunities for that. But it also allows people to play against people of a similar rank and skill. So we have a whole ranking system in place uh, utilizing the true skill system. Um, so to ensure that, you know, people of a similar skill level can play against each other. So with that said, let's give a shout out to our most recent gold tournament winners. These are our, our top tier players. First place Frisk, second place Banana May, third place Pancakes. We appreciate them.